Hi everyone and welcome to the Justice Jam 2017 panel session. My name is Vanessa Perez and I'm the Associate Director of Time for Change Foundation and the mission of Time for Change is to empower disenfranchised homeless individuals and families by building leadership through evidence-based programs and housing to create self-sufficiency and thriving communities. And today on our panel I have these dynamic women here in the room. Um, ladies, can you go ahead and introduce yourselves and who you represent? Yes, hello, Senator Connie Leva representing the Senate District. 20 from Pomona out to San Bernardino. I'm Assemblymember Eloise Reyes representing the 47th Assembly District from Grand Terrace, Colton, Rialto, San Bernardino, and Fontana. And I'm Mayor Deborah Robertson representing the wonderful city of Rialto, the jewel of the Inland Empire. That's right. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, ladies, for being with us this morning. And, you know, Senator Leva, I know you started off bagging groceries in your local market, and you worked your way up to representing thousands of workers. Tell me, where did your passion for employment come from? I think my passion for employment comes from knowing that if people have a good job, it fixes so much of what ails us in society. Um, not only does it help the individual, it helps their family. Mm -hmm. When we look at moms and dads who are working two and three jobs, to mm -hmm. keep a roof over everyone's head, uh, then the kids aren't getting the attention that they need so that they yeah. can do well in, in school and things can spiral out of control. So having a good union job for my entire life, yeah. my family was always able to pay the bills and I want that for everyone in the district. And that's great and that's what everyone deserves is to have that good, decent wage paying job so they yes. can afford to make a living and yes. take care of their families. Great. Exactly. Assemblymember Reyes. As a Latina woman myself, I just have to say that you really inspire me, um, especially being the first Latina woman to open up her own law firm in the Inland Empire. That's kudos to you for that. Um, and I know you started your humble beginnings picking grapes and fruit in the fields with your families. And I'm sure that housing must have been an issue for you growing up as well. So can you just share a little bit about what your passion for housing comes from? I think it, it comes from that, and knowing that we come from humble beginnings, and knowing that you have a safe place to come to every night is very important. My parents are my greatest example. I, what my mother uh, married at the age of 14, came from Mexico to join my dad. Um, by the age of 21, she and my dad had purchased their first home in yeah. South Colton for $1,000. Wow. And after that, the next one for $5,000. And that has been their way of, of taking care of their children. But housing is so much more important because when we see, you, you talked earlier about the homeless issue, we've got to take care of that. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to make sure that, that we find a path for many to, to get to their own home. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And at Time for Change Foundation, we believe that everyone yes. is deserving of a home that yes. is nurturing and supportive. Mm -hmm. So without that, you have nothing. That's true. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Mayor Robertson. Yes, hey Vanessa. Hey, <laughs> thank you for hosting us here in the wonderful city of Rialto. Thank oh, you for thank the space. You. This is awesome. And you know, I just wanted to congratulate you on being mayor for the last five years and for being the first African American mayor of the city mm -hmm. of Rialto. That's amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it's an interesting, uh, it's been an interesting journey. Yeah. And uh, when I came to Rialto back in 1988 and in the 90s, uh, the African American population was relatively strong in Rialto. Mm -hmm. Then over the period, everything has changed and, and it's greater diversity, but it's still been, um, you know, a, a tribute to the fact that the diversity and me sitting here represents everybody being a part of my election, not just one one group. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I know you've had a uh, long, uh, many years on city council and you've had mm -hmm. about 20 years on the transportation commission. And so can you just tell us a little bit about where your passion and commitment to transportation comes from? You know, um, well, besides the fact that I worked for the department for the state of California, a department of transportation for as many years as you've said, prior to coming here, I also was born and raised in San Diego, California. Okay. And just what the Senator spoke to, um, I come from a union background, you mm -hmm. know, where wages and, and a good employment is, uh, is important. And what uh, Assemblymember Reyes spoke to about housing and how her parents came here. I'm the first generation California in my family. My parents came from Texas and Louisiana. And actually they also bought their home here in California, the first one in 1951, which I'm happy to say my mother is still there and oh, living in that yeah. same home. Um, and so, you know, home housing and good employment is important, but then also transportation is relevant to the house, the job, and mm -hmm. having the ability to get 
uh, and having access to transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really adds uh, not only for the, the essentials, mm -hmm. but it also adds for the opportunity to travel, yeah. to take family on outings, and a way to really have, you know, enjoy a family experience. So I just can't help but be concerned about transportation. Yeah. Um, transportation as it relates to being inefficient, mm -hmm. not that it's totally deficient. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to say that yesterday I had an opportunity to sit down with Omni Trans and, and speak to the concerns of just transportation for the working class, mm -hmm. you know, and, and its ability to be, um, what would you say, uh, able to be sufficient enough to meet the needs mm -hmm. to accomplish yeah. what you want. It shouldn't have to be an either or, and and I think oftentimes we work with our agencies like it's got to be an either or, that's and it's true. really about funding. So yeah. when you partner, and that's why I'm happy yes. I'm here with these lovely ladies because besides just complaining, there's a window of opportunity. Yeah. Yes. Right. We have SB one just passed yes. transportation bill, and I want to make sure we don't just focus on the infrastructure of roads for vehicles, but we look at those other modes of transportation. Oh, absolutely. No, definitely. And especially thinking of single women and single mothers who mm -hmm. have children and having to take their children maybe on a bus to a doctor's mm -hmm. appointment stuff, it's a little challenging. And so having those resources are definitely what's needed to make more adequate transportation for right. our families. Yeah. And in their district, I think Rialto as well as San Bernardino and Colton, we're probably some of the more transit dependent communities. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Our, our, our uh, constituents still rely on it. And they're not selecting a because they, that's the choice and the way they want to go. It's that's because it's the almost need. essential and so neat. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Well, thank you for your passion on that. Um, and I also wanted to congratulate you on being the only city in the county of San Bernardino <laughs> for getting granted award of Prop 47 Yay! funds. That Yay! is amazing. You As we went succeed. after it. You went after those funds and you got it. And we're so excited for you. You know, a Time for Change Foundation. Mm -hmm. We really want to emphasize the need for women and girls to be represented in those mm -hmm. fundings and mm -hmm. that reward. Yes. So uh, we just applaud you for, for your work and just going after that and getting it. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> and, it, and it was an amazing journey there as well and the partnerships and working with again agencies our regional uh, agencies the probation department they're going to handle focusing on the distribution of prop six uh, uh, 27. 20, 47 dollars excuse me at 64 47 77 <laughs> they're going to um. handle the, the, the rollout of the dollars for the adult population mm -hmm. and we in the city of Rialto will be focusing on ages 14 to 17 mm -hmm. and I think what made us successful is again partnerships multi-jurisdictional yes. grant mm -hmm. so our grant covers not only while we were the lead it also covers San Bernardino and Colton so we will be reaching out and that's a natural because our our school districts and our communities we you know we don't see borders yeah. you know we yeah. see cooperative and co uh, collaborative relationships. So it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, we look forward to And the staff work. is in Sacramento as we speak, being uh, briefed on um, the grant and what's expected. Well, that's, that's, great. Great. Awesome. that's great. Awesome. That's great. All right, so I want to move into some critical facts with you ladies. I have some, some shocking data that I just wanted to share. So did you know that in order to afford a one-bedroom apartment in the IE, you need to make an hourly wage of $17.46? Mm -hmm. And did you know that there are 34,955 households on the public waiting list while mm. there are only 1,309 slots available? And shockingly, 62.3% of women are commuting more than 15 minutes to get to their workplace. Mm -hmm. So, Senator Leva, mm -hmm. under your progressive leadership and vision for the district that you represent, what are some of the things that you would like to see in your district? Oh my goodness, so many. How do I, how do I talk about it in a short amount of time? Um, I have to always go back to jobs because that is the most important. As the mayor said, so is transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can't just be about getting in your car and driving. We need better public transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, we look at the SBX in San Bernardino um, and those are also clean energy vehicles. Uh, we need the gold line to extend all the way out here. We need the metro to continue to go where it's going. And we need to make sure it's affordable for folks that if you're going to get in public transportation that you can afford to do that. Housing is of critical importance. We have a number of bills that the assembly member and I in her house and my house that we're working on for affordable housing. It yes. is really housing and um, 
uh, homeless issue is really the issue of our lifetime mm -hmm. and we have to figure out how to make that work and there are some good bills that we hope will get through both houses and the governor will sign that will bring um, a, quite a bit of money to this region. Mm -hmm. Women's issues are absolutely huge for me. Um, I grew up in a house where I had a very supportive father, I have a very supportive husband and I had no idea I didn't realize how bad it still is for women. Mm -hmm. And when women don't have a good job, they can't change their situation. So uh, it, for me, so many things go back to having a good job. Minimum wage jobs are poverty level jobs. We have to make sure that we desire more in the Inland Empire. We have warehouses everywhere. Um, they're not all bad jobs, but so many of them are poverty level jobs. And I just think we need to raise the expectation in the Inland Empire and expect more because we deserve more. And I could go on for a very long time, but I know these <laughs> ladies have one Wonderful things to say too. So thank you. Well, very much. and and I'm really glad that you brought up the the issue of having access to affordable housing. Yeah. You know, Time for Change Foundation. We are actually developers of our own yes. affordable housing, the Phoenix Square, which mm -hmm. all of you ladies have Mayor come and visit. Mayor Robertson, you're actually there recently. Yes. So mm -hmm. tell me what you ladies thought about the Phoenix Square. Well, actually, if you don't mind, I'll go first. I'm, okay. I was sitting down yesterday. Yeah. No, <laughs> yesterday with uh, a developer, and okay. the day before with one of the pastors and pastor walked in and he's donate, wanting to donate land and I said I wanted to use the Phoenix House and Time for Change model okay. as an opportunity to see if perhaps we could replicate what is going on yeah. um, with your facility mm -hmm. in Rialto. So uh, okay. I've already had conversations with um, the, the persons who are doing affordable housing construction. Mm -hmm. Talked to our staff uh, yesterday about what are the resources that are available to make that happen? Um, I'm excited about that facility. I couldn't really say how many units were within, but I suspect there's at least six to eight units in there. And seven. Uh, seven, uh, see, and, right I, the and I was sitting right in one of them. I mean, and I- They're beautiful. They're beautiful. They really I, are I, beautiful. You know, I, I wish I had that in some days when the 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 significant other spouse and others are getting on my nerves. I could just go into <laughs> one of those units and close up myself. And, no, but it, it's exciting, and uh -huh. so I'm looking forward to um, seeing if we can't create something similar. And then, in addition to that, back to homeless. I was with the developer yesterday because I found in the county we are putting in some transitional ho uh, homes and housing to deal with the homeless, especially mm -hmm. those with uh, mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm uh, working on right now, I've convened a group of people in our community and I'm hoping the senator staff and some member staff can come to the meeting on uh, Tuesday. I know Time for Change is going to be there so that we can now focus on the homeless, what I call the homeless uh, uh, residents of Rialto. Mm -hmm. They are still oh residents of yeah, Rialto. Right. They're just without exactly. home. That's and right. I think we have to think of them as that they are our homeless. That's right. I that's think right. that's really important to, yeah. to remind ourselves yes. that they are residents. Yeah. Whether it's Rialto or Colton, San Bernardino, yep. Fontana. Yeah. Yeah. They are our yeah. residents yeah. and yes. we do and, need to and take you know, care of them. And, and yeah, I always say to them jokingly, you know, they, they don't get up from red, Redlands out of the canyon of Redlands in the morning and say, oh, I'm going to go over and spend the day in Rialto. No, mm -hmm. there's a relationship and a proximity. Yes. Right. And they are Rialto's homeless residents, mm -hmm. just like they were called. And we, we need to see that and not expect us to figure out government, go do something yeah. with them and yeah, right. about no. them and hopefully take them somewhere else. Where? Exactly. They're here for a reason. Some situations, some financial circumstances has created it. So, And that's why we're here, because mm -hmm. we are here to do the work. And, and we, we have, have the model. We have the yes. nationally recognized model. And it, it is a great proven, model. evidence-based, and it works. So and give them back the dignity. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, the dignity that they deserve. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Assemblywoman Reyes, I know you have a bill that you're currently carrying, AB 1268, a domestic violence bill, which sets aside some funds to help victims of domestic violence. Is there anything else that you'd like to see for the district that you represent? I think in general economic opportunities. Okay. For so long, we, we, we have great people here in our district, yeah. and we mm -hmm. just need to be able to bring the resources and the opportunities back to our district. And I think that two priorities for the Assembly, I'm sure for the Senate as well, were transportation and housing. Oh, With SB1, we were able to take care of 
the transportation needs, mm -hmm. and making sure that every single one of our cities is going to receive a dollar yes. amount. Mm -hmm. That's right. Rialto is going to receive over $2 million mm -hmm. on an annual basis. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, San Bernardino and Fontana, over $4 million on an annual basis. These are important factors to consider. The, the other was housing. And we're so excited that there is a housing package being put together mm -hmm. as we speak. And we hope that by Monday we'll be voting on it. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to bring the money back for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Just as the mayor has talked about, we have to have those resources. Mm -hmm. And we have to, once these bills do pass and are signed by the governor, we are there to fight to make yes, sure we get our that share. our district receives its fair share mm -hmm. of the funding mm -hmm. because that has been missing in the past. Exactly, and I love that you mentioned that you need to make sure that our districts mm -hmm. get the fair share. And yes. I mean, we believe at Time for Change, we would like to see us nonprofits being able to have direct access to the funding as well not really have to funnel through a government agency but us really being able you know we have the capacity and we're able to manage these funds and we're able to produce effective great results so yes. that's something I think that we would like to see and come out of that as well in addition because you are already proven to yes. be a successful pro uh, you've done successful projects mm -hmm. others who don't have that success could be um, uh, funneled through you as well mm -hmm. so that they could then receive their funding through you. And I think we need to look at uh, alternative ways of taking care of the issues so that it doesn't go through just a government entity mm -hmm. but rather funneled directly to the very organizations that are mm -hmm. taking care of business. Yeah, maybe we could talk a little bit more on that after you know the show. We will. <laughs> well, Vanessa, and I would just like to let you know that you and Kim are probably getting your wish. I was just informed yesterday that the governor did put the money back in for the CalGrip program and so we will have grants to continue on with the Summer Bridge program that oh, Rialto's yes. is running. Uh -huh. And I also found out that the language this time allows for uh, nonprofits and other agencies besides just governmental to go after the grants. So, That's good news. So, yes. Thank you for sharing. And I advocate <laughs> the same position you're advocating Thank for you. uh, Time for Change and nonprofits. I also advocate that, and they know I've come up, that the dollars can flow directly mm -hmm. to this local government. Mm -hmm. I yes. don't necessarily need them to come through Our a county. regional body right. and mm -hmm. a sub-regional body. It's good when I get a portion of that as well, but I, I think direct. we can manage for our community, mm -hmm. uh, we're very capable, and, oh, and I'd like to make sure that we have those local directions. We have to uh, find all the, the right models. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. one model fits all. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. So Let's do it. Let's do it, yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, Mayor Robertson, I know you sit on many commissions and boards. Um, is there anything that you could tell the viewers that they can do to support the work that you're doing in transportation? For, for starters, I would tell the viewers to come out on July 22nd for the Justice uh, yes. July Jamboree and support us on what we're doing and the direction we're going um, and, and, and look for uh, innovative mm -hmm. ideas to come from us and, and to support us on those because um, the decisions happen locally mm -hmm. and the need mm -hmm. to take care of. They represent us at the state level, mm -hmm. but the day-to-day -day things right. uh, happen locally. And, right. exactly. and it's all the partnership of them knowing what I need. And then, you know, I, uh, hopefully they, they're in the position to help bring the resources and the support to my community as they do to all the other communities. So mm -hmm. on transportation, I would just ask people to be more engaged mm -hmm. and, and, and realize that they are the customer. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, the facility and services are out there for them. So Definitely. And in and, and every issue that we spoke on today, housing, transportation, employment that these are statewide issues you mm -hmm. know prop 47 mm -hmm. funds we yes. want to see all women and girls throughout the state receive that their fair share and so i'm kind of glad you brought up our justice in july jamboree that's a great segue <laughs> for this point we're so excited and we thank you ladies for partnering with us to do mm -hmm. that so if you could describe the justice jamboree in one word what word would it be motivational for me, equity. I want to find the equity for all of our young girls, our, our women. I, I want to find that equity for everyone. I would say outcomes. That's good. I'm looking for outcomes. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Motivation, equity, outcomes, it, that, those are just a few words to describe it. But I just want to let our listeners know the mayor said it herself. Come out and support 
on July 22nd, our Justice in July Jamboree is going to be held from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Rialto City Hall. We're going to have live entertainment. We're going to have a resource fair outside. We're having a kids' corner, a misting section so you can cool off so you don't have to worry about being in the heat. We got free food. We're going to have a Prop 47 clinic. We're also going to have rental utility payment assistance and employment and housing assistance services so you don't want to miss that. We're also having our listening session where we're going to be able to talk about these issues and you can come, you can tune in, and you can support and let your voices be heard. So I just want to thank you ladies again for coming out. We're so excited to have this event. We can't wait and we hope to see all of you there.